Hello there, I'm Black Bright broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you'll know what I talk well, you won't know what I talk about. I talk about lots of different things, um, things that I think might be unfair, um, injustice, um, a little bit about politics, a little bit about immigration. And for those of you who like the lighter side, I talk about Love Island, but it's finished now. So, unless there's something um, that takes my fancy, anything that takes my fancy, I talk on it. So this evening, um, I decided to talk about, um, you know, the detention centres that, well, you don't know, but the detention centres that um, deportees are held in, it's it's not held in by the government. The government actually contracts outsiders, private firms, to run them. So they kind of relinquish any kind of responsibility. So while um, the Home Office or whoever will say, oh yes, we're providing a good service, and although um, the people who take them over, they'll say, oh, we're providing an excellent service, and the deportees or uh, the detainees will be treated with respect, blah, blah, blah. They then outsource it to someone else who doesn't give a damn about who they're detaining and how they're treated. Now, the Home Office have just paid out 200 million to Serco. Serco um, originally had Colbrook, but they, um, for some reason, something went wrong. They had they were lying about their the tags on people's feet, overcharging and stuff like that. And they um, didn't take cold book. But now they've just been awarded Book House and Tinsley House. So they not only have um, Harmon's book. Is it Harmon's book? They have, um, they have three now. They've been awarded three detention centres. I'm going to read it out. So... I'll elaborate on it a bit more. But they've now been given three detention centres to run. Now, Serco doesn't have a very good reputation in the past. There's been a history of sexual abuse on women in some of their centres in Yarlswood and um, brutality, and as we saw in Panorama 2017, abuse, humiliation and all that kind of stuff. So now 200 million pounds they're more or less saying okay we're going to give you 200 million pounds you can do what you like with the detainees we don't give a toss you can treat them like crap it's out of our hands we've got somebody to do the job therefore they can get on with it and that's the way it appears to us it makes us appear it, it appears to us that if they can pay um, a company 200 million that doesn't have a good reputation of treating humans like human beings, that they're more or less giving them license to do whatever they like. And by outsourcing them, yes, the managers could say, um, yes, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to give them training schemes, we're going to give them educational facilities. But they're not the ones that are doing the job. They're outsourcing it to other people. Who, who, who don't care, who are probably underpaid because the money goes in the top and, as you know, it trickles down. So the people who are actually doing the job aren't getting that much and they're probably the type of people who are racist. They probably take on that job because they are racist and they just relish in having that power because the majority of those uh, people that work in detention centres, you don't hear any... Well, I guess you can't get whistleblowers because then they'll get kicked out. But you have to be in collusion with what's going on to work in that place. Some people work in there just for a job. They don't really care about people. Some people work in there because it's like, you know, certain police officers who, who, who are on this um, power trip. They take that job on not because they want to keep... Um, our country safe, but because they like the power attached to it. I'm not saying all police officers do that, but you have a minority of police officers that take on the job as a policeman because it gives them a certain amount of power and they feel as though they can do what they like and there's nothing no one can say about it because they have the last word. The same way you have people who work in detention centres who don't care about people they just care about the power. They care about getting a kick out of um, 
taking the mick out of people, humiliating them, abusing them. And that's just the way it is. So um, the Home Office hands private firm, which is Serco, a contract to run removal centres despite allegations of abuse against immigrants. A Nigerian woman was thrown to the floor by 11 Serco guards like she was a bag of cement. The detention centre is a place where those who run it have licence to abuse you and no one can do anything about it because it's all behind closed doors. It's worse than prison. Um, and nor does anyone want to. Everyone turns a blind eye, complaints go unresolved. It's a way to perpetuate slavery. Why else would the Home Office reward a company who has a history of re abusing detainees? An eight-year contract in the sum of £200 million. I don't know how they quantify that. I don't know how they justify paying that amount of money. So if you can voluntarily repatriate, do so. The way they see it, if you're living in, the, in this country and you're not here legally, you are giving them permission to, to mistreat you and disrespect you. Regarding of the human rights laws, which when we leave the EU, you won't have any. I said this in a previous video and people are talking about, oh, yes, we will. Everybody has human rights. Psst, live in the dream world, mate. Um, they have now been given the authority to run two more centres, which means that abuse is approved. Serco currently runs Yarlswood, which is in Bedfordshire, and will now run Brookhouse and Tinsley House, which is near Gatwick. Um, it was previously run by G4S, which also had a bad track record and was broadcast on Panorama. So they were, it was G4S, not Serco, that was broadcast on Panorama in 2017, um, showing us the abuse, assaults and humiliation on detainees. Um, Serco's contract um, begins on the 21st of May 2020, so you know they'll be rounding up more immigrants. Um, so-called illegal immigrants but we know they're not all illegal um, to use and abuse they've also have a similar contract in australia outsourcing serco wins 200 million contract to take over gatwick removal centers which means they are not responsible directly for the actions of their staff they outsource and get anyone in because anytime you know some people do that they take the money the heads take the money and then they outsource to other companies. And they, you know, a lot of times they can't be bothered to verify the background of those companies. And so once they outsource and they know somebody's doing the job, they close their eyes to it and that's it. We've paid the money, let them get on with it. And usually it's whoever can do the job as cheap as, as possible. Um, Serco has settled nearly £91 million in fines and a settlement for overcharging for ankle tags. But yet, despite a bad track record, the Home Office still deems them fit for purpose. There have been multiple abuse claims, including allegations of sexual misconduct towards female detainment de detainees at Yarlswood. Serco already runs Yarlswood detention centres and used to run Colnbrook, which is in Harmonsworth near Heathrow Airport, until Mighty took them over in 2014. It has over a thousand beds. Can you imagine how much money they're going to make? It's a money making thing. It's all for profit. It's got nothing to do with it's got nothing to do with keeping the country safe. They want people to believe that it's to keep people safe. It's just making money the same way prisons make money, make profit. So do these detention centres. It's all about money. Um Serco will take over Brookhouse and Tinsley House contract currently run by G4S from the 21st of May 2020. Serco, which already runs Yarlswood Detention Centre, will take over... I just said that. Sometimes I write things twice, I think. How do we know that Serco won't outsource to G4S? We don't know, do we? G4S had a bad rap, like I said, because of Panorama. We don't know if Serco might say, OK, then. G4S know the run-ins. We won't have to retrain them. They know what's what. They're trying 
behave themselves a bit better than how they behave themselves in the past, let's outsource them to G4S. Nobody's checking. Who's checking? Every now and then they have an audit after the damage is done. But in the meantime, we don't know what people are doing. They're not accountable to anybody in the interim until it's time for their annual audit. And maybe a few people have died or people have been, you know, well, usually it's normally when people have died that an investigation takes place. But then it's too late. Serco has been accused of serious abuses against immigrants and they have been awarded 200 million home office contract to run two immigration removal centres. Yet they're telling the public that detainees are treated well and have access to education, school based activities, vulnerability and safeguarding training for the increased number of staff. But behind closed doors, it's something else. Because if they're outsourcing, it's not them, they're not responsible. They're meant to be responsible, but they're not responsible. They're probably, when the, when the shit hits the fan, they say, oh, well, we outsourced it to so-and-so. It's up to them. Circo, oh, how many times am I going to bloody say the same thing? A court awarded, a court recently heard that a Nigerian rape survivor at the centre was involved in an altercation with 11 Circo staff during which she was thrown to the floor like a bag of cement. The outsourcing giant has also faced a string of allegations of sexual misconduct towards female detainees by staff. There was also an issue with Serco in 2018 when in its capacity as provider of asylum housing in Scotland, it issued notice to asylum seekers that it planned to change the locks in cases where asylum applications had been refused and tenants had not moved on. Serco facing inquiry over sexual assaults at the Hell on Earth Yarlswood Centre and yet they have received an extension of their contract. G4S, who was being investigated for a series of abuses, said it would not bid to renew the contract to run the two centres because it wished to shift its focus onto running prisons. Yeah, it's going to run prisons. I reckon, I reckon they're going to be outsourced. The firm was subject to a storm of criticism in 2017. When undercover footage showed alleged assault at Brookhouse, humiliating and verbal abuse of detainees by officers, and that was aired on BBC's Panorama programme. Priti Patel is ultimately responsible for what happens in the UK's immigration detention estate, which is rotten to its core. But as long as she is not being treated like the immigrant she is perceived to be, she will continue to condone the, mistreat the mistreatment of those she feels are separate and apart from her. Bail for immigration detainee said, we are dismayed that Serco continues to be awarded contracts to run detention centres in the UK, despite obviously having failed to protect people in, the, in their custody in the past. Immigration detention in the UK has become big business. BID, that's Bail for Immigration Detainee, said it's unfortunate. It is unfortunately in the interest of companies like Serco that receive lucrative contracts from the state to drive down costs to maximise profits. As it is, conditions in immigration dissension are inhumane and it's our clients that pay the cost. Why is the Home Office getting so many immigration decisions wrong? The Home Office is not getting immigration decisions wrong. They are creating their own rules and hope to get away with it. And they do most of the time. And when they get caught, they feel it's worth paying out the financial penalties. Rupert Soames, chief executive of Serco, said the firm had a great deal of experience of caring for people in the immigration system, both in the UK and internationally. And it understood the sensitivity and complexity of the role and was committed to ensuring that there is a healthy and decent environment in the centres. Wouldn't that be nice if it were true? I hope it is. Immigration Minister Kevin Foster said this contract is a major step forward in our programmes of immigration detention reform. It will significantly improve the day-to-day -day lives of detainees and the staff who support them. 
problem is if they're outsourcing to people, they don't give a toss about their detainees' well-being. Why are there so many illegals to, be, to become legal? It costs 2000 1000 health health surcharge plus currently £1,052 in home office immigration fees. And this does not include lawyers' fees. Children, I believe it's 1015 Coming in on the EU settlement scheme, it's free if you have a permanent resident card. All permanent resident card stickers need to be replaced. So, all that is to say is that I feel sorry for anybody who ends up in a detention centre. That's all I can say. Bye bye for now.